Most of what people consider to be long distance trips uh, would be completed in less than half an hour. More people travel around the world than ever before. As nearly 150 million passengers took a long haul international flight per year, the Concorde once cut that time down even more. But what if there were something faster? There's at least two or three credible players um, who have made uh, very good progress. And you know, it is our belief that at least one of these players will be able to deliver on the future opportunity. We know it has to happen for for end to end transport to be economically viable. And I just don't see that UBS have incorporated any of this into their report. I don't think it'll be here in 10 years. The market would be there at that price, but I don't think the cost would be there. So what we're talking about here is called point to point space travel. The idea is you get in a rocket with a couple hundred other people and you blast off above the atmosphere and you spend about an hour traveling above the Earth before you come back down all the way on the other side of the planet. SpaceX has estimated that they could do a trip from New York to Shanghai in this sort of way in about 39 minutes. Uh, you can get to, to most long distance places, like I said, in less than half an hour. And if we're building this thing to go to the moon and Mars, then why not go to other places on Earth as well? I recently wrote about a UBS report, which estimates that by 2030, the market for point-to-point -point space travel could be worth as much as $20 billion. There are a number of private companies uh, which will soon be providing um, this service. And then can you build the case from there that there's enough critical mass where that comfort translates into people using it more regularly? The challenge of getting around through point-to-point -point space travel is a difficulty as old as aviation itself. If you look at aviation, it started off in 1903 with the Wright brothers, but it was really about 70 years later where we started to have hundreds of millions of people uh, utilizing it. You know, in terms of numbers, in 1970, there was about half a billion air passengers. At the moment, we've got four and a half billion people will travel by air. If you were born in the late 1800s, thinking about getting on, a, uh, on an aeroplane was probably quite daunting. For an individual. Right now it's it's more like a uh, Kitty Hawk than it is, you know, the the, the Pan Am terminal at, at, at uh, JFK in, in the heyday of TWA. We have looked at the number of routes which are over um, 10 hours, you know, in the report we say there are over 800 routes. These routes are servicing over 150 million passengers. So even a small percent of that market is a material revenue opportunity once this product is delivered. Well, I think the most exciting from our side would be Blue Origin and SpaceX. I guess there's a very short list of companies that could think about doing something like this. And it's not clear to me that that it's ever been a strategy of any of them to start thinking about human transportation uh, point to point on Earth. Uh, Credit where credit's due, I think it's a pretty ambitious and forward-thinking plan. There are three big challenges that stand in the way of point-to-point -point space travel becoming a reality. Cost, logistics, and safety. On price, there's still quite a long way to go because the average cost of a long-haul international flight, according to UBS, is about $2,500. And for this to really break even, a point-to-point -point space travel flight would probably cost about $12,000 a person. SpaceX and others uh, use their orbital class vehicles for that. The trick is to get the price down to something um, approaching uh, free for all intents and purposes from the current tens of, you know, tens of thousands of dollars per kilogram. So uh, if they can get it down to 100 bucks a kilogram, I'll go. I wouldn't be surprised if they'd pay 50,000 to go once uh, just to say they did. But uh, that's not a, a sustainable market and it's not a very big market, frankly. But if, it, if they did have daily service at that price, then it would uh, hit, hit the number in your article of 20 billion per year. So it, it certainly, it certainly tantalizingly close. I don't think it'll be here in 10 years. The market would be there at that price, but I don't think the cost would be there. Because uh, for one, if he had those things that could go to orbit or to Australia, 
maybe people would want to go to orbit. There are also potential intermediaries between long haul travel and point to point space travel, and that comes in the form of hypersonic planes. The Concorde was the closest thing we had to that, which was a supersonic plane, which inflation adjusted cost around $12,000 a person to fly. But hypersonics offer something that's maybe not quite as fast, but perhaps more reliable for people than point-to-point -point space travel. Another problem that critics point to is that actually traveling in the airplane itself isn't the most difficult part of air travel, even on a long haul flight. Often, the most difficult part of flying is getting to and from the airport itself. Point to point space travel, therefore, doesn't really quite solve that last mile issue. The problem that goods transportation is, is having at the moment is last mile delivery. So whilst, whilst you've got this incredible 40 minute from New York to Shanghai or whatever it's supposed to be, like it's always gonna be the last mile delivery that kills you. We haven't heard anything from SpaceX about what they expect their hub and spoke uh, model to look like yet. So similar to how you would need some sort of connecting flight or connecting on the ground transport when you get somewhere, these are really what slows down a passenger go from point to point, not that long segment of the journey. People are trying to use private jets to facilitate that last mile delivery problem. They want to be able to go door to door and it just sounds like paying 20 grand for going from door to train to boat to be afar to boat to train to door is not a proposed solution for that problem. I think one of the um, difficulties might be f flying over land masses and where the so-called spaceports could be positioned. And of course, even if you solve the local transportation problem and you bring the price way, way down, your customers, who are likely very wealthy, will still be concerned about safety. There has to be to some extent, what gets people com comfortable with the concept of utilizing a spaceship to, to do long haul travel on Earth. So clearly there's a long way to, to go in terms of you know, making sure that it's as safe as, as aviation, if, if not safer. To get space flight anywhere near close to uh, as routine as airline transportation, so the air, you know, air traffic control, safety, just flying off the risk to get it within a factor of 100 of the safety of airplanes would take years flying once a day. But naturally, any new technology faces adversity in the beginning. The commercial crew program, which SpaceX has been working on for NASA, has taken almost a decade to come to fruition, and that's only launching a handful of astronauts into the International Space Station at a time. From a SpaceX perspective, I think the history of the idea just came from, I'm not sure that it has anything more to do with the fact that they have a technology that they need to find several use cases for. So I get the feeling, and I might be wrong, that this is just a solution that's looking for a problem. It's the same skepticism to some extent that we received on Airbnb shared accommodation even in 2014, which is not that long ago. I, I don't think that skepticism's there anymore when I talk to investors. Well, I, I think the thing I was surprised about, and you know, you know, again, I'm talking mainly to professional investors, was I, I thought I was going to be met with a lot of skepticism, and and, and I'm not saying there isn't skepticism, and, and frankly, rightly so. You know, until it's been proven people will be skeptical but I don't think there was ridicule I, I think people can see this reality actually and I think what it would really take would be that price and that degree of safety to give them comfort.